Welcome. A new friend of mine, Dismal Hero, has agreed to do a collaboration with me, and I'm happy to say that it turned out rather well, though you can be the judge of that. Make sure to head over to his channel, check out his content, and subscribe to stay up to date with his newest videos. But now, let's get started. These are four unsettling outdoor slash cryptid stories. Just for reference, I am 25 years old and live in eastern Tennessee. I had recently graduated college and was taking a little time off to relax and sit around before I went job hunting. I moved back in with my parents and younger brother. My brother is quite a bit younger than me. He was just moving into junior high when I graduated college. As it was the beginning of the summer break, I decided to take him camping. I had promised him for a long time that I would and figured it was a good opportunity to as my schedule was completely clear. We went to a state park in the mountains and since we lived in Tennessee, it wasn't too far away from my home. After a mile hike into the woods, we set up camp. I didn't want to go too far as my brother was quite smaller than me and it took a bit of effort for him to keep up. We set up camp in the late afternoon and made a fire as it started to get dark. We cooked hot dogs and made s'mores and told some ghost stories and just talked about school and life in general. It was a good opportunity to catch up with my brother as I hadn't gotten to see him much the past few years when I was at school. As the night drew on, we became tired rather quickly, drained from the hike. It was a nice night out and the moon was full, illuminating the forest around us. We got into the tent and then got situated into our sleeping bags. My brother was out like a light within minutes. It took me a bit, but I finally drifted off to sleep. I am a rather light sleeper, which is troublesome at times, but... Tonight, I believed it may have saved us. I woke up, in a daze, and unsure how long I had been asleep. I knew something had woken me, but was unsure of what it was. That is, until I heard it again. Voices, not too far outside our tent. It was at least two people talking in very hushed tones. I jolted awake at this point and strained my ears to hear them. I couldn't make out what they were saying until they got closer. So, both of them are done, right? Yeah, go on that side and let's do this. I heard the men approach our tent, one on either side. My heart was racing at this point and I had no weapons in the tent to defend ourselves with. I saw the man on my side, silhouetted by the moon. He lumbered over the tent, with something in his hand I couldn't make out. I was frozen with fear, wanting to yell, but couldn't. I snapped myself out of the trance when I remembered my brother was there. Who's out there? We're armed and we'll defend ourselves with deadly force. I said out loud, hoping they wouldn't call my bluff. Thankfully, they didn't. The man on my side of the tent took off running into the trees, and the man on my brother's side I heard turn around and then trip and let out a yell. He then dropped something and ran, but it sounded like he was limping. I waited for a few seconds and grabbed the flashlight and proceeded out. I looked around and didn't see anyone. What I saw on the ground, though, shocked me. Approximately where I heard the man fall was a large bowie knife lying on the ground with drops of blood surrounding it. The man must have fallen on it when he tripped in his haste to get away. I woke my brother as he managed to stay asleep through all this, telling him we had to leave. He asked why and not wanting to scare him, I told him I spotted a pack of wolves and it wasn't safe. We ran to the car and went home. 
I dropped him off, making sure he got inside safe. Then, I went back to the park to report the incident to the ranger station. It was now dawn, and I returned to the campsite with two park rangers escorting me. I showed them the knife, which was still lying there, and they looked around. I started to pack up the things we had left there when one of the rangers approached me. She asked if I had brought a shovel. I told her that I hadn't, and she had me follow her about 20 yards away from our campsite. What she showed me still haunts me to this day. There was a shovel sticking out of the ground and two freshly dug holes. They were about two and a half feet deep. One was about as long as I am tall, and the other was about my brother's size. Next to the shovel was plastic sheeting and duct tape, as well as another large knife. I felt sick to my stomach, and the looks that the rangers had on their faces as they looked over the area didn't bring me any comfort. The rangers put out a bulletin to all law enforcement in the area for the guys, as well as hospitals, since I told them one of the men was injured. But nothing ever came of it. Unfortunately, they didn't have much to go on as I didn't see them, only their silhouettes. It troubles me knowing that these guys are still out there, doing who knows what. I have no idea what these guys were planning to do with us but I know it wasn't good. I never told my brother about what happened, and I don't plan to until he's much older. One thing I know for certain, though, is I will never camp in the mountains again, at least not unarmed. I live in the mountains about 10 miles outside of a small town. I live near a winding back road highway well known for its many fatal accidents, a lot which happen to be collisions with animals, deer, small rodents, sometimes more often than not, mountain lions. I grew up in the county my whole life so I've seen about every wild animal my side of the state has to offer, whether alive or roadkill. But recently, I saw one that I could neither identify or rationalize. My husband and I had stopped by for dinner with his co-workers in the town down the windy road from our home. Once it grew close to midnight, I knew we should be heading home. My husband insisted he wanted to stay a bit longer to have a drink with his buddy. Reluctantly, I agreed he could stay, even though he knows I hate going home late at night by myself. We have about half a mile driveway leading to our home, which is blocked off by a padlocked gate. I get paranoid every time I have to get out of my car to unlock the gate, pull inside, and then relock the gate behind me. Not that I'm afraid of someone attacking me, but up way in the country, a wild animal mauling me. The number of mountain lions and bears in the area was definitely above average. I headed back home alone, my husband promised me he would only be about another hour. I took the dangerous road extra cautiously in the evening. The thick cover of trees surrounding the road made it pitch black. After finally arriving at my road, I hit the gravel fast eager to get inside. What I saw next made me slam my brakes so hard. I fishtailed a bit and scattered gravel every which way. What I saw barely two feet from my car was incomprehensible. It looked almost like a human figure at first. It appeared emaciated, its ribs stuck out so far they took a barrel shape. It was hunched over, but if it stood straight it had to be at least eight feet tall. Tufts of matted hair all over its body. What skin shone through appeared to be mangled and mutilated. Long limbs almost resembled human arms but too thin and discolored. Its legs arched like wolves. It had no sign of human face. The face had what seemed to be a snout that contained sharp sets of canine teeth that shone as it snarled at me. 
My eyes locked with its piercing yellow eyes. It stared me down for what felt like an eternity. Then, all of a sudden, it broke our gaze and then swiftly disappeared into the woods. I was so scared, I sat in my car until my husband arrived home an hour later. He had knocked on my window to get my attention. He questioned me about it once we were safely in our home. I've been dealing with paranormal experiences with spirits since I was a child, but my husband says he has never seen me this shook up before. I guess I'm not good with something that can rip me limb from limb. I'll take a ghost over that creature any day. It was late last summer and I was staying at my aunt and uncle's as my dad had to go work overseas for the year. Being a senior in high school, I decided to stay and finish up at the school I had attended most of my life. My aunt and uncle lived on a farm, about 15 miles outside of the city, so it was pretty peaceful for the most part. I helped them with farm chores as much as I could, but couldn't really do much, and of course they had most of it covered already. One morning, I woke up and walked out to the kitchen and saw my uncle talking to a man from the Department of Natural Resources. I walked in when they were almost finished with their conversation and waited for the officer to leave before I asked my uncle what had happened. I could see the worry in his face, but he explained to me that five of his cows were killed the night before. I asked him what did it, as coyote attacks were not uncommon around the area, but he said he didn't know, and it was just out of range of the surveillance cameras he had set up. He said, if I wanted to see the remains of the livestock, I could, but advised me to see it before I ate. I told him I wanted to check it out. Growing up around hunting and fishing, dead animals didn't really bother me. I started learning how to process my own deer at 12, so I had a pretty strong stomach when it came to this kind of stuff. Whenever I told people this, they always thought I wouldn't be into that kind of stuff since I was a girl, so the reactions I got from people were always interesting to see. Well, my uncle knew this, as I went hunting with him and my dad mainly, so it kind of caught me off guard when he implied that it was bad. We got out to the cow pasture, and the scene looked unreal, almost straight out of a nightmare. The barbed wire fence was completely torn to shreds, and there were parts of cows everywhere, and I mean everywhere in the literal sense, hanging off of trees, on the fence, and what looked like a 30-foot area of the pasture was nothing but blood and bones. This definitely wasn't a coyote attack. Whatever did this was massive, or had to have a lot of them in the pack. It was an absolute massacre. I could tell my uncle was upset because these were his dairy cows, which he had very few of, and took good care of them. I helped him clean up the pasture and put the fence back up. That took up a good part of the day, and by the time we were done, I ate dinner and passed out on the couch for the evening. The next morning came and I was awoken by my uncle yelling in anger and disbelief. Another two of his cows had been killed. The part that made me worry is after the past night, he put all of his cows in the barn. So whatever it was, broke in there to get them. We went and surveyed the scene. The metal barn door had been ripped off the track that it slid on and was on the ground in a tangled mess. Again. The scene inside was just as gruesome as the field, if not more so. My uncle decided he would stay up and camp out all night to try and catch the animal that was doing this. I volunteered to help him. When night came, we let the cows out of the barn, each grabbed a firearm, and set up tree stands on either side of the small pasture so we could see the whole thing. The moon was full, so that aided us. The night went by slowly, with little activity, actually none at all. Around 1am, a small pack of coyotes approached. They came from the side where the fence had been torn down. I shouldered my AR-10 
and train the scope on what I believed to be the alpha of the pack. I followed the coyote as he approached the fence from the outside, but when they reached it, they stopped. The coyotes briefly sniffed around the area, barked at each other, and then took off at a dead sprint back to the tree line. This left me a bit uneasy because I had never seen an animal back off like that, especially not in a pack. Another two hours went by and I was starting to lose myself to sleep when I noticed a small group of cows nearest to my stand start to stand up from their resting positions and trot towards a larger group that was closer to the barn. They made noise, which woke the other cows up and started joining the others as they went and huddled near the barn. I quickly shined a small LED flashlight towards my uncle's tree stand, and he flashed his light back at me, acknowledging that he was seeing this. Then, as I looked back, I saw it. Only about ten yards away, on the other side of the fence, a creature, not a bear, or a dog, or a cat, something I couldn't identify. It was on all four legs and looked about seven to eight feet long and its face looked like nothing I had ever seen. It had dark black eyes and a mouth that stuck out a little bit from its oval shaped head. Its ears were nothing more than a hole on either side of its head. It had fur along its back and was heavily muscled. Its gray skin looked like it was stretched tight over its body, accenting each muscle. It stood there, staring at the cows, and then stood up on its hind legs. It looked like it was almost ten feet tall once it was standing. I regained my composure and shouldered my rifle. As it was standing slightly under a tree, there wasn't enough light for me to take the most accurate shot, so I aimed center mass took a deep breath and squeezed the trigger. The shot echoed through the night air and the creature fell back from the force of the bullet hitting it. I lowered my rifle, but to my surprise, it stood back up like it wasn't even phased. It looked straight at me, its black beady eyes seemed to pierce my soul, and then it screamed. The loudest, most blood-chilling sound I had ever heard. And then it ran back into the tree line. My uncle ran up to me. Out of breath, he asked what happened. I climbed down from the stand and explained it to him. We spent the next couple nights out there, but the creature never came back. It wasn't but a few months later there was another report of a farm. It was about 20 miles from my uncle's, and they were losing cattle in the same way my uncle had lost his. Then one day, we heard the DNR were finally able to shoot the creature and identified it as a bear with mange, so it had lost all its fur. But when they came and showed us a picture of the animal, I knew that wasn't it. I'll admit, even though it's been a while since this happened, whenever I go hunting now in the woods around my uncle's, I am always a bit afraid, knowing that this thing is out there, watching me, and possibly stalking me. I'm always armed with a gun, as well as my bow, so if I ever see it again, I'll put it down for good. This happened to myself and a close friend, both 23-year-old males, just last month. We decided to go on a two-night backpacking slash camping trip in the Adirondack Mountains of New York. We are both very comfortable with nature and spend a lot of time camping, hunting, fishing, etc. We hiked about five miles into a small lake and set up camp on a small beach. This was not a heavy trafficked area and we did not expect to run into anyone. Our first night there, as we were sitting around the fire, 
We saw the flashlight moving on the other side of the lake around 10.30. And this was fairly unusual, however, we did not think too much of it. But as time went on, this flashlight kept moving around the lake, getting closer to our campsite. We kept discussing who could possibly be wandering around the woods in the middle of the night, and we did not particularly want an unwelcomed guest. Once it was clear that the person, or people, were heading for our campsite, we moved off into the woods nearby to see who wandered up. I took a small axe with me, and my friend had his 22 rifle. Now, we weren't expecting any trouble, and we certainly didn't want to make any, but we figured we might as well cover our bases. Now, the moment of truth. The flashlight comes near the light of our fire, and it was one man. He has a beard and is probably in his mid-forties. The scary part was, he was carrying what turned out to be a pump-action shotgun. He walked around the campsite a few times and then proceeded to enter our tent. After rummaging around for a minute or so, he came out and started yelling, I know you're out there, why don't you come and say hello? My friend and I remained motionless under the hemlock tree about 50 yards away. That is when the man proceeded to fire his shotgun into the woods, not too far from where we were. He also swung his flashlight around several times. After what felt like hours, he grabbed my friend's backpack and a few articles of clothing we had drying off near the fire and threw them in to burn. My friend, who had trained the 22 at the mand, asked me if he should shoot. I told him absolutely not unless he spots us and starts to point the gun in our direction. Thankfully, the man moved off from where we had come after a little while. We waited until his flashlight was on the other side of the lake, ran out, grabbed everything we could fit in the pack, and took off. It was now around 2 or 3 a.m. We ran out the trail with flashlights and made it back to my car as the sun was coming up. We immediately went to the police department and reported it where we also spoke to some forest rangers. That was it. I haven't heard anything back from the police. It wasn't mysterious, however, it creeped the hell out of both of us.